Okay, now let's do this. Let's not panic. There's cause for concern, but there's not yet cause to panic. Welcome to the Bird Brains with Ken and Mark, everybody. My name's Ken Dunnick, ex-Philadelphia Eagles tight end, Philadelphia Stars tight end. With me is my partner, Mark Eckel, of course, covered the Eagles for years with NJ.com and the Trenton Times. Mark, you and I had a good time texting each other throughout this game, and we made mention before we started recording here, when it was 14-3, to we didn't like the way the Eagles were playing, and we kind of felt like, something bad might happen and unfortunately for us that was very prophetic yeah it, i mean i could just you know when you you played the game you've seen a billion games college pro and i've seen a billion you you just sense things even though the team was winning you sense that it wasn't and again i thought i still thought they were going to win i even when they got the ball at the end i thought yeah. okay they're gonna pull this out 21 20 because it was the Jets. I just had no confidence at all in the New York Jets. But, but hey, the Jets defense played a great game. They, they forced the Eagles into four turnovers. Um, give the Jets credit. I just didn't think that Jet offense was good enough to, to, to do what they did. Well, we're going to talk a great deal about that. But let me mention that uh, this podcast is sponsored by Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine. Uh, our new football issue is out. Lewis Riddick is on the cover. My partner, Mark Echo, wrote that story for us. Of course, Lewis is the one of the lead NFL prognosticators and analysts for ESPN and Monday Night Football. And I also want to mention that the Jersey Man, Philly Man event of the year are unmasking gala where six uh, charities benefit from the evening is uh, going to happen on November 2nd. There are tickets still available. We always have about 500 people at Ballroom at the Bend. We raise a bunch of money for six deserving charities. And if you'd like to attend that event, go to jerseymanmagazine.com, buy a couple tickets, and and join us. And uh, I also want to mention that we are recording here at the Sweet Recording Studios. Our great friend Joe Gangemi is uh, doing a, a nice job of engineering this podcast. And if you have a podcast need, Please reach out to Sweet Recordings in Mount Laurel, and Joe will take care of you. So uh, the reason why I say uh, that there is cause for concern but not panic, when you look at them going into that game yesterday, number one, <clears throat> the Jets have a very good defense. And I, I realize I'm old school, but uh, Jim Morris said something very prophetic to me once, and as long as I've been watching football 40 playoffs? years later, it's, it's the playoffs? truth. No, he said that. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, that's what he's known. That was another one. That, that, that was but a different what, one. what he said was, if you have a good defense and you can run the football, you have a chance to win every football game. The Jets have a very good defense. Now, they weren't exactly proficient at running the ball yesterday, but they do have a good defense, and the part of the problem with the Eagles is they went into this game really uh, undermanned. They went in without their best defensive lineman. My opinion now is Jalen Carter. He was out. Their best cornerback, Darius Slay, was out. During the game, they lost maybe the best right tackle in football, Lane Johnson, to an ankle injury. Um, uh, Cam Jurgens has been out for a while, so they didn't have one of their starting guards. Uh, during the game... Uh, Bradley Roby and uh, Eli Ricks went down. So the Eagles have a very depleted backfield right now. And you and you couple that with the fact that it was just, a, to me, a lethargic performance. Um, you know, Devontae Smith dropped a couple passes. Yeah. He, he doesn't do that. He was wide open over the middle one time and just that was, dropped that, the that ball. Was, that could have been a touchdown or a, a big gainer. Well, he, he was he was 20 yards in the clear. I was a little upset that uh, on that one play, I believe it was in the third quarter, when they went deep to A.J. Brown, he didn't run through the route. Did you yeah, notice was that, that? Was that a miscommunication? That's, that's, well, I don't know, but that's really uncharacteristic for him. That's what I'm saying. He never does that. So was he? did he think, I don't I mean, we're not there. Um, they, they did a lot of things that they don't do. Jake Elliott missed a 37-yard field goal. Right. And, and, and to tell you how big that was, that, that game – if it's 14 to 12, which it was, that's one thing. If it's 17 to 12, that puts a lot more pressure on the Jets' offense to, to score a touchdown rather than get in the field. Now, as it, turns out, either, well, right? as it turns out, yeah, I mean, Hertz uh, throws that interception and they take it back and they score in the next play. And you and I had a little bit of a disagreement about this uh, live when the game was happening. I thought the Eagles let them score at the end yeah. to give them a chance to win. 
And I thought that was exactly the right thing for them to do. I thought the Jets made a mistake by not going down at the one yard line. You, I thought you disagreed with me a little. Yeah, bit I do. Long. No, I disagreed on that part. I, the Jets have to score. I think I know what you're saying. The Jets could could have gone down at the one, and then just milked more time. They could they could have run the clock all the way down and kicked the chip. And then missed. But then what if they missed the field goal? Well, I, listen. Well, what what is the percentage from from the two yard line of, of missing a field goal? The Jets have never beaten the Eagles. Zero. I, I, the Jets I get winning against so you're waiting for zero, something zero. wrong to go on, right? You're, you're I, waiting, I, I, you're waiting I, for the. I'm with you. If the game was tied, I'm with you 100. percent If they're win, if I'm winning, certainly I don't score. I take the you know, but they were losing. And can you imagine if the Jets did what you wanted? They take the, the you know the who are the Brees Hall whoever it was carried. If he takes if he goes down at the one or the two, and then they. They just kneel, kneel, and then well, the the Jets fans would do like they've been doing for the last four years. <laughs> but a bad snap or a blocked field, anything crazy happens, and they lose when they could have. The Eagles were letting them score, so was, I, I know, I know your theory. You know, no, the that goes back to my thing, which we we disagreed on too. Is when the Eagles had the ball third and nine near midfield, the Jets are out of timeouts. I know. Listen, I'm all about being aggressive and 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 going for the killer. You know, putting a dagger in the. Yeah, in the that's it. Game's over. But the, they but make the way the way this game had gone, neither neither offense was lighting it up. Mm -hmm. if, if this was a 38-35 game, yeah, you you got to score points. Or if the other quarterback was Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes or Joe Burrow, Zach Wilson, backup yeah. backup quarterback. I got you. I would have run the ball, take a little more time off, punt them deep, and say, okay, Zach Wilson, go go 60 yards and beat me. Well, certainly you don't anticipate an uncharacteristic, uh, terrible decision by Hurts to throw that ball that gets intercepted at, at that point. I mean, that, and, and uh, you know, to that point, um, great quarterbacks like Tom Brady, like Joe Montana, Johnny Unitas, go back as far as you want. When you put pressure on quarterbacks, you can make a great quarterback look very mediocre. And I really thought that happened to Jalen Hurts yesterday. He threw three picks. They had another fumble. Um, Jack Driscoll replacing Lane Johnson. Now, listen, Jack Driscoll has been with the Eagles for a while. Yeah. Uh, he, he they they don't have uh, usually have bad players on an NFL roster. If he's been there that long, he's probably a pretty good player. He's not as good as Lane Johnson. Nobody right. is. So, you know, to your point, if you want to go conservative because you have Jack Driscoll instead of Lane Johnson, that would be an argument to run the football and try to milk the clock. But and under normal circumstances, I think I think that that's it's a no brainer to go for the first down there. Well, third and nine, it was third and four. Third, third and, and eight. I think it was third and eight. No, but. Well, whatever. It was long. It wasn't an automatic. Yeah. I'm I, I just would have used it. I, I, again, and I'm usually not. I'm usually in the aggressive, go for it. I like when they go for it on fourth down. I like doing all that kind of stuff. But just the way that game was being played, where the, I don't think the Jets could have gone sixty yards. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I mean, if you're again, if you're playing Kansas City, no, I go for it. If you're playing, you know. Joe Burrow and the Bengals, maybe I same thing, but that maybe I just don't think the Jets are any good yeah, well, <laughs> offensively. Anyway, uh, um, listen, uh, we'll we'll talk about and and Zach Wilson. I, I actually think he's improving a bit as a yeah. You, he was right. nineteen for thirty three yesterday for one hundred eighty six yards. The last couple of weeks, he he he's been better. So, he's yeah. getting better, and and you know normally he was the number two pick in the draft. Game. Exactly, he's, he's <laughs> got to have some tools, right? Although there there have been some busts that have been number two pick in the draft as far as quarterbacks are concerned, but the, you know the bottom line is. You can't win a game with four turn the turnover no. ratio being four to zero. I mean, it's exactly. it's really impossible. The fact that the Eagles hung in there and had a chance to win that game right up until the end is testimony to you know the, the team, how good it is, the character of the team. But you know, when, when you when you look at that scenario, you look at the fact that their uh, defensive backfield now is really depleted, and we'll talk well, about so the upcoming Jets. schedule coming. That out. was the yeah. thing too. I, I think the yeah, they were missing Sauce Gardner, their best, their, best their top three player. corners, including yeah. Sauce, who's their best player on defense. Yeah. Um, and I think that, and I know why they did it. The Eagles, listen, they knew Sirianni knew that the Jets were missing their top three corners. If I knew it, he certainly knew it, right? So. That's why their game plan was what it was, which was throw, 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 throw. Okay, we'll mix a run in just to give the wide receivers a break. Um, but that wasn't 
the, when the Eagles are playing well, they're running. They're, they they have a very good balance. You know, Swift's DeAndre Swift's off to a great start. Yeah. Um, hey, how about this? You talk about balance. They only ran a running back uh, uh, rush times? For, fourteen times, 14 times. Of the entire game. Yeah, DeAndre yeah, Swift they're... had ten. Gainwell had two, and Boston Scott had two. And that's that's not a good balance. No, of I course, saying, and I, you know, and maybe I, the Jets defense made him go in that, that route. Well, I don't it know. did. I mean, I think Sirianni saw, you know, he saw blood in the water. He saw three backup corners out there saying we could blow. And listen, I don't blame him. I got A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith going against guys that one guy came up to, off the practice squad this week to to start. I mean, that's how, that's how depleted the Jets secondary was. So I don't blame him. But you still need some balance in your offense, yep. especially when you have the lead. Most and they, and they led from till the very end. I mean, it was it was fourteen. Like we said, it was fourteen three at one point. And you have a good running back. It's not like you had no running backs. You you yeah. have a you have a, a a bevy of good. I mean, they have like you said, Swift, Gainwell, and and Scott. Um, and Scott Scott only had two carries, but how many yards did he gain? I mean, the, how about the burst? How about the energy he just brings to the whole yeah, team? I mean, every my eyes light up every time I see him <laughs> in the game. And it has unfortunately it hasn't happened that often this year. But I want to make another point about Driscoll. Again, he's not Lane Johnson. He's not going to be. But it's inherent on the Eagles coaching staff, especially offensive coordinator Brian Johnson, if he sees he's overmatched to help him to help him out. You can put a tight end over there to help chip. You can put a running back over there for for protection. There's a lot of and I don't and I think they left him on an island yesterday. I didn't see him giving getting much help at all. I didn't see any help at all. And that you're right. When I mean, and I don't. A lot, it's not just Sirianna. Coaches do this sometimes. They, you know, you put your back up in. I like you said, he's not. And I'm starting to. We we, we can talk about Lane Johnson a little bit. Every year now, it's something with him, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's taking its toll. Let's let's not forget he was suspended twice, right? I'm just saying, right? Um, those things take toll on your body. Um, so when Driscoll goes in, yeah, you you don't you. <laughs> I know it's they, easy for coaches to say next man up, next man up. We're gonna yeah, yeah exactly. Game. But, but yeah, if, if you see the next, next man, man up is struggling, you got to address right. the game plan. Yeah, you don't <laughs> yeah, you don't help that next thing. man. Help him up. It happening Boost over them up. Over. Give them some help. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's not the same. It's not. There's a reason he's a backup. And now, listen, Driscoll's not a. He's not a. Ter- the Jets. The Jets front four is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest. They, he went against a pretty good defensive front. But you, it, it, it's criminal on the Eagles coaching staff's part to not give your backups, like you said, have the tight end stay in and help. Have a back chip them. Have whatever you want to do. That's up to you. I mean, you're. Well, how about a three step drop? Instead of dro- dropping back right. some, I mean, or run the ball a little more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, let Let's talk about uh, statistics. Hertz twenty eight for forty five, two hundred eighty yards, one TD. But again, the three interceptions. Now, the one wasn't his fault. Right. I agree. The first yeah. one was. I think that should have even been a fumble. I know it, it, the ball never hit the ground, so it's not a fumble. But he completed the pass to Dallas Goddard. Yeah, Goddard and Goddard, Goddard was loose with the football. He was loose. You yeah, so let the linebacker up. punch it out, and then another guy caught it. Yeah, technically that should not. I don't think. I mean, it's going to go down as an interception. But my God, Hertz did nothing wrong there. He mm-hmm. completed the pass. Mm-hmm. But the other two, I can't. I can't. I can't defend them on. Yeah, and, 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 Sw- and DeAndre Swift had a big fumble. The, the, yeah. the hurt. It just, you know, it's it's funny and the how the, the moment. Drops. Yeah, the, the and the drops and. You know, it's Penalty. funny how games unravel. And that was a classic example of you and I talking live during the game. We can see things happening. Oh, we're, you know, we're in trouble. And all of a sudden, it, you know, it continues, it continues to happen. It's, uh, it, it's funny how momentum can just take over a football game, regardless of who's playing. Now, listen, when one of the things that hurts about that loss yesterday is that that was a winnable game. Okay. When you look at the upcoming schedule, it, this but, is scary stuff, all right? There, how, they have how, long Lane, how long is Lane Johnson going to be out? Have, have we got it? Well, it's a him? high ankle sprain. It, it'd be probably, you know, uh, it could be. I mean, uh, those big things guys, are tr- yeah. those things are tricky. He, he's a big guy, but when you look at what's coming up, you got Miami at home. This Miami offense may be the fastest offense I've, I've ever seen. They, and they if got, that secondary doesn't get healthy, Tyree Kill might might break records. Exactly. Um, 
so that's that's a concern. Uh, we're at Washington. Uh, we've talked about this in the past weeks. Washington gives us matchup problems. Yes, they always do. Every I mean, year. It, it's a division game. You know, then you got Dallas at home. Dallas is Dallas. Eagles, Dallas. I mean, you can't. Yeah. You can't count that as a win. Then, uh, the, uh, you know, the bye, I, I wish the bye were actually in the next week or two. It's actually yeah. three weeks away. We could use the bye. But after the bye, we're at Kansas City, home against Buffalo, home against San Francisco. This could get scary, okay? If we don't get healthy, this schedule could get scary, and the, the season might be in jeopardy. I mean, again, I, I... – They'll win something. They're not going to lose all those games. No, 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 no. They're, they're not going to win them all either. No, they're not. They're not going to win all those games. They're not. They're just not. It's if they do, that'll be amazing. But that's why you said, like, yeah, when you have a game when you're leading 14 3 against a team that's not as good as you are, it was on the road, but that shouldn't matter. They're the ones you have to put in the in the um, even if they won on if they won 14 12, you know, we would have I'd have been saying the same thing I said last week. I'm not apologizing for a win. Right. A win's a win. Yes, they looked bad, but they still won. But now it's a loss. Now you got, now, you know, and again, it's going to, you're coming down. Listen, the Eagles goal this year isn't to win the division or make the playoffs. The Eagles goal is to get back to the Super Bowl and win it. Right. I mean, this is, this isn't a rebuilding team. This is a team that went to the no, Super Bowl last year. Those and, are and the expectations for sure. So now you got to look at things like you want home field, right? You don't want to go to San Francisco in the playoffs or, or Detroit. All of a sudden, Detroit's five and one. Detroit's now a, it's real a three-way thing. tie. There's I, a three-way I, tie at, at the top now. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to go to Detroit. I don't De- Detroit's to the real deal. They, they, I mean, they certainly you know, are. Every win and loss now you got to look at, and and it, like you said, you can't. It's hard to it's hard to win when you turn the ball over four times and you don't get any. So as good as a defense played yesterday, and I, you really can't blame the defense for for this loss, but they could have, you know, a, they could have caused a couple turnovers. Zach Wilson's been known to turn the ball over. Well, he didn't turn it over yesterday, so right. you could have offset some of those those four turnovers with a turnover or, or two of your own. And then again, Jake Elliott's been so Rock I guess solid. sometimes he gets spoiled. I, I, right? I was shocked when he missed. Now. Was that? that is a windy stadium, and it is yeah. windy there. I don't know how much that wind affected that kick, but watching Jake Elliott in practice earlier this year at Novacare, he he was busting him through 40, 50 yards one oh, after another. I was, I was really – and it was a good snap hold, too. I mean, yeah, that, that wasn't pushing. anything going on other than he just he – just And you said it. the wind is tricky at the Meadowlands. And did it, was it raining when it – did it start to rain a little bit there? It did. It was misty Maybe rain, and, and it wasn't I'm not cold. making excuses, but yeah. – I mean, people tell me that – you know, I covered David Akers. Most of the years I covered Eagles, David Akers was their kicker for the majority of that of that time. He was, I thought he was one of the best ever. People mm-hmm. tell me this gets better than Akers. Yeah, uh, well, I, I would agree. I his would numbers, agree. his numbers are right there. So, mm-hmm. again, it was just it was a game where almost everything. I mean, Hurts doesn't throw four, three interceptions in, eight, in a game. He just doesn't mm-hmm. do that. But he did. But again, he was rushed because he yeah. didn't have his normal offensive line. Hey, a couple more injuries. But Smith in, doesn't uh, drop balls, and he did. No, uh, there. Oh, he doesn't miss kicks, and he did. I mean, it was just one of them days. A couple more things on the injury front that I saw interesting, and you know, the cloak and dagger stuff with teams and they hide injuries and everything. I didn't even know Jalen Carter and Darius Slay were hurt until like Friday. Did well, you? Did. Did, yeah, I did. Uh, whether they were, but they were listed. I believe they were listed as questionable. Question. Yeah. Well, they were they were they were holding out hope, but yeah. Yeah. And then um, one thing that I thought hurt him, and I and I love this kid, Reed Blankenship, uh, had a rib, rib injury. Now they called a penalty on what they called yeah. a blindside block. To me, that was that's good football back in the day. I mean, you got you got a pat on the the butt when you right, like, cut right? somebody out like that. So if 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 you blocked a guy like that when you were playing, the coach would have said to you, "Hey, nice block." Well, can't you get a high five? You don't right? get a flag. Yeah, you know? now you get a flag for it. I don't. It's... So so what are what are we going to do? Where are we going to find defensive backs to cover these Miami receivers? They, I tell you what, the training staff better be working overtime this week. Otherwise, we might yeah, they're gonna. That's, this is gonna be a rough week if they don't get some. If, I mean, I don't know how bad Slay is if he can come back. If, if this is a one week thing, did you um, hear what his injury was? I did not. I did. did you... what I forgot. Yeah. It was was it hamstring? I couldn't tell you. I should I should have researched that before we. Got I want to say hamstring. Um, um, so I mean, yeah, they're gonna if if they're 
depleted back there, then then it's up to the defensive. That's up to the coaches to come up with something. Maybe you just you go all out and put pressure on Tua and don't give him time to find Hill. But yeah. then it's up to Miami's all. You know that that this is going to be an, and it's, it's Sunday night, right? Yeah. yeah, it'll be it'll be fun game. I'm going to the game. Oh, you are going? Okay, Jer- Jersey man's having a tailgate that night. I'm going to the oh, game wow. and. Uh, all right. Should should be a good Hope time. Hope for bad weather. Hope for cold, windy. No, I don't want to sit out there in bad weather. <laughs> you know, the box or the dead of box. <laughs> yeah. but actually, I'm actually, from... actually, I am in a box, so I guess the weather doesn't really make much difference. But the tail, yeah, I don't want to be cold be right. at the tailgate. Yeah, make, make the warm make the warm weather dolphins I'm, playing listen, weather that they're not accustomed to. I'm getting older. Older guys get colder. That's just the way. That's why you moved down to Myrtle Beach for the, exactly. for the nice, I don't the see nice cold warm weather. <laughs> Well, this is your game. That's right. You should be. This is the Miami. You got Miami man versus Jersey. Miami, man. Yeah. My, as a matter of fact, we have, uh, for those of you listening, we have Miami man magazine. My daughter, Ashley is actually going to go down this week. I'm still jet lagging from my Europe trip. So <laughs> she's going to handle, handle the Miami duties. So it'll be, uh, they think it's Eagles dolphins. It's Miami man versus Philly man. Philly man. That's the real story. Is, is coming up, but, uh, a couple more things to look at stats wise, you know, AJ Brown, we, we, we ragged on him for not what I thought he should have ran through that route. Yeah, I don't know what that, I don't know what happened, uh, but he did have seven catches for 131 yards. And you had mentioned uh, it might be the best trade in Eagles history. I, I agree with you. I mean, this, I said this, that. I mean this, this kid is really good. I hate to say that because the, the trade I thought was the best in Eagles history involved a, a good friend of ours, Bill Berge. Hmm. I used to think that was the best trade in Eagles history when the and they, they gave up a lot to get him, but he made the difference on well, how that. About, how about how uh, about Ron Jaworski for Charlie Johnson? How about that? Charlie Young. Charlie Young. Charlie Young. That was a good trade. Yeah, that was a good trade. But I, Berge, I thought. Who did they give up for Berge? Do you remember? A bunch of picks. Yeah. Well, Berge, you that's, need... and that's why they had no picks. <laughs> for for really got well, Berge and Stan Walters, they traded a bunch of picks for both of them, but both of them turned out to be great players. I don't mind right. trading picks for great players. Right. But Berge used, you, did you ever hear the story? Berge used to joke, but you know, but you know right. Billy pretty well, right? Very, very. And well. you know he's kind of a little bit of a joker, right? Well, uh, he used to, I do. the 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 day of the draft. Now, back then, the day the draft was wasn't like it is now. It was ten people cared about it, maybe. <laughs> But but he would go into Vermeil's. He he'd go into the to the war room and poke his head in there and say, "Hey, your first round picks here." Because <laughs> they had already they didn't have a first round. They traded for him. He did this in Vermeil's like, war room. I don't. I can't yeah. see Vermeil taking that very well. To be honest, well, he probably didn't. But it was no. Bergy, so he kind of just probably rolled his eyes. <laughs> um, yeah, you, so yeah, you bring, I mean, yeah, you bring out the but, characters uh, back in the, the AJ day. Brown trade. I just thought. They only gave they gave up a first and a third, and got a guy that I you know I thought he was the main reason they got to the Super Bowl. I mean, Hurts had a great year. Don't get me wrong, but I think he getting him made Hurts so much better, and it made Smith better. I mean, he made he made the whole offense better. He still does. Um, that one play, I'd love to know what happened on that play. Speaking of speaking of quarterbacks, though, uh, I was listening to uh, Sports Talk Radio the other day, and they were talking about the best quarterbacks in Eagles history. They said it was Donovan McNam. I'm kind of lean towards Randall Cunningham myself, as far as the most talented. Now I'd understand he didn't, have, yes. he didn't have the success that Donovan had, but he also, you know, probably didn't come up small in big situations as many times as Donovan McNam. Well, did. And yes, then, did. You know, Jawar, I think Jaworski hmm. got to be in the mix too. And certainly I think Hurt, they'll talk about Hurt. Hurts will be. Hurts yeah. will be when it's all you said. Think, you think he'll be the best ever in the Eagles uniform? Because He's, He's got to stay healthy. Him. He's got to stay healthy, and, he, and if he keeps going, he'll be right there. I, you know, I, I covered both. It's funny. I covered both of, of Randall and Donovan's whole career in Philly. Um, Randall and I actually came in together, and we have a lot in common, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, Talk but, about an athlete. Oh, the best. Yeah, he's the greatest, the most talented by far. I was at the game. I was at the Giants game when they they, they had him down, and, and he held That's the greatest one hand. And, yeah. Yep. Could have, and who Jimmy did Giles, the, right? It wasn't Jimmy Giles. Giles called called the yeah. Yeah. Carl Banks has put the hit on him. And yeah. I actually did a book, The Greatest Plays in Eagles History, and I I made that number one. Huh. I thought it was, I mean, I watched it over and over and said it was unbelievable. And yeah. Car- Carl Banks gave me a great quote about that play saying, because I talked to Carl about it, and he was like, Oh, you want to ask you about that? I'm like, <laughs> well, you don't mind. He's like, he listened. He said, I watched that play so many times. 
over and over saying, what could I have done differently? What did I do wrong? So I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. I made a great play. Sometimes you just but get he, beat. But he made the, a greater play. Mm -hmm. uh, How about the arm strength? How about the punt? Oh, my God. That's what I was going to tell you. If Randall wanted to be, if they, he could have been a Pro Bowl punter. Oh, absolutely. Easily. Yeah. And a kicker. He used to mess around. We This is when we were allowed to watch practice and stuff back then. This is in the 80, late 80s, mid, mid to late 80s, early 90s. He was, you know, we were allowed to watch. So we'd be on the practice field. Randall would mess around sometimes after practice, right? Because they have, like, back then you practice and then the special teams kind of practice yeah. after the regular practice. Was yeah. Well, Randall would hang around sometimes and think, hey, hey let me kick some. Yeah, go ahead, kick some. He was making like 55 yarders with Amazing. Eve. Hey, have you ever tried to kick a field goal? It's hard. It's hard yeah, to oh, kick I, a field yeah. goal. Yeah. Yes. By the way, <laughs> your, gro your groin doesn't operate that way. If I tried too many times, it'd put me on IR, but it's it's hard to kick. I a have field. a lot of respect for kickers. People disrespect kickers. I have I have a ton of respect for kick. To, to kick it that far and that straight. It's a lonely job. It's not easy. And when the game is on the line and your team wins or loses on your make or miss, it's it's not easy. It's not easy. It's like standing over a five foot putt for the win. It's not easy, man. You got to do now, it. What I'll say about the Donovan Randall debate, though, Donovan worked harder. He studied more. Well, that I was love the, Randall. That was the Randall. knack. That was the knack on Randall. That he yeah. Man, listen, Randall. Randall and I are still friends. We we still text each other happy birthday and stuff. Whatever. I love the guy. If he would have worked a, just a little bit harder, studied a little more film, mm -hmm. what, you know. He, was, he, was that story true about the, the yeah. Dallas game when Rodney Pete uh, went down and and they put Randall in and he he didn't know he didn't know the game plan or something no right? because he was away that's when his son was being born right he, he left the team to be with his wife thinking I'm the backup at that point he was he was a little upset that he got benched for Rodney Pete that, yeah let, let's play this whole thing out he was not happy about that yeah. so he's like I'm not, I'm not I'm I'm going to be with my wife I'm not the hell with this. <laughs> Then he had to put him in, and he had no idea what. Well, but at least bring the plane, the game. Plan. Oh yeah, at least study, study a little bit. bit. On, he didn't on, study on, when uh, he was there. You no way he was going to study when he went to when he went to Vegas. He was like, <laughs> but there's other stories about Randall too, where they just, you know, he he just got by on unbelievable natural yeah. ability. Unbelievable. This is, this is good stuff. This podcast has turned into an Eagles uh, history <laughs> trivia, right. which is which well, is always good. But but listen, uh, hopefully, I think, well. well Bringing it back to today, yeah. About Jalen, I think Jalen Hurts. He's now he's not as big and strong as Randall, but he, but he well, strong maybe, yeah. No, he's he's uh, got strong. the talent. Yeah, he's got Randall's. He's on. He's <laughs> got that talent and that ability, and he does work hard. He probably works even harder. Than, I does. mean, from what I see, and I'm not there every day like I used to be around Randall and Donovan, but this guy works hard. He's gonna he like he's not happy today. He's not happy with his performance at all. He's gonna. He's going to put on. He's going to be good next week. He's going to play very well. I tell you, I don't know if the Eagles going to beat Miami because I don't know about if they're going to stop Miami. Yep. Jalen Hurts is going to have a big, big game next week. He's yep. going to play very well. So um, Hurts is going to play well. We can't stop Miami. You're saying bet the over. Bet the over. <laughs> there you go. Bet the over. Maybe make might be money. 74, but <laughs> I'm not sure what the number is going to be on that game. <laughs> well, listen, Mark. Yeah, it was it was great. This always goes quickly. We've run out of time. Hopefully, we'll be back and talk about an Eagles victory next week. But uh, on behalf of my partner Mark Eckel, this is Ken Dunnick. Thanks for listening to the Bird Brains with Ken and Mark, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Take care. <laughs>